The pair sat quietly in the tree while another group of people passed below. When they were gone, Honey Bear asked, Are you happy living in the forest? Giving a slightly puzzled look, Jerome replied, Of course I am. Isn't it obvious? Well, yes, I suppose so, Honey Bear continued. It's just that you seem so keen to see your friends at the zoo. That's because I am keen, Jerem said, but it doesn't mean that I want to live there. He shifted his weight on the branch. And my forest friends are just as important Potting and Arley, Harold, Geraldine and all the others. You, of course, he added, with a twinkle in his eye. I see said Honey Bear, sounding relieved. And think of all the things that have happened in the short time since I arrived there, Jeremph went on. Like the journey we made to the waterfall, although it took some doing persuading you to go. Well, it wasn't exactly nearby. Honey Bear said, and you know I'm not fond of long walks. But you must admit it was worth it. And Jerome made fluttering motions with his fingers. Do you remember that butterfly with the bright red marks landing on your arm while we were walking there? Yes, said Honey Bear. I love butterflies. They have such beautiful colors. An excellent day out, Jeremph said. And best of all was how you growled at those two men who suddenly appeared to frighten them off and stop them seeing me. So they couldn't tell the zoo they'd found their missing gorilla. Jeremph scratched his head with his hand thinking for a moment. And other things, like those strange birds who appeared in the tree next door with the long, sharp beaks, what are they called? Herons, said Honey Bear, smiling. It's funny how we've never been able to get them to speak to us, however hard we try. That's right. Jeremph said, and the strange way they have of staring all the time. And then there was you falling through the ice on the frozen lake, Honey Bear said, laughing. And the ducks and geese helping me to rescue you. Yes, Jeremph said, but it wasn't funny. I don't think I've ever been so cold. And you finding the beautiful purple flower, Honey Bear went on. And annoying snotty, even though I didn't mean to, Jeremph said with a smile. And making the lovely garden, Honey Bear continued, smiling at the thought. And planting the beautiful purple flower there. And how we had to stop the squirrels digging it up. Because they buried their winter store of nuts just where we planted it. He should have known I was only playing, Jeremph said. I didn't mean any harm. I know that, said Honey Bear. But it took the other animals a little while to find out what you were like. You have to remember, none of us had ever seen the gorilla before. For a few moments, they both sat in silence. You know, Honey Bear told her friend, it's good to talk about the things we've done like this. It brings it all back. It sort of makes it real again. That's called a memory, Jeremph said. And the more things we do, the more memories we will have. Yes, I can see that said Honey Bear. And so, Jeremph said, When you think of all the good times we've had in the forest. There's no way I would want to go back to living at the zoo. To start with, there's not a lot going on. All I did during the day there was sit in my enclosure, eat, 
talk to the nearby animals. Try to amuse myself making faces at the zoo visitors passing by. Move about a bit or sometimes use the branches they put there for me to climb on. He raised his sad brown eyes, but that's about it. Pretty boring, really. Yes, said Honey Bear. I see what you mean. But what's most important of all, Jerem said, suddenly rather serious, is that I found my freedom in the forest, and that's a really big thing and something I didn't have at the zoo. The morning became the afternoon. Honey Bear and Jerem were still sitting in the tree waiting. How long do you think Jip will be? Honey Bear wondered, looking out through the branches in the direction of the zoo. I don't know, said Jerem. As long as it takes, I suppose. How long's that? Honey Bear continued. We've been waiting for ages. Jerem was just about to answer when the jay alighted on a nearby branch. It's all set, Jip told them. I spoke to Osman the giraffe. They'll be keeping an eye out for you. As daylight faded, the two animals watched the moon rise into the darkness. A slice of light in the sky shining with a silvery beam. Isn't the moon pretty, Honey Bear said. I know we see it in the forest, but here, Without the trees all around, it just seems so much bigger. And brighter, Jerem said, nodding his head. It looks much brighter. When shall we start out for the zoo? Honey Bear asked. I think we should give it a little while longer, Jerem said. Once the zoo closes, it becomes very quiet, and the longer we leave it, the quieter it will be. Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen, Jerem said, turning away from the moon and looking at Honey Bear with his sad brown eyes. What you need to remember is that this is an adventure, and all the best adventures have little bits of all sorts of things in them. Like what? asked Honey Bear. Like being daring and doing unexpected things, Jerem said. And feeling excitement and danger and seeing new places. And making new friends and doing new things. I see, said Honey Bear with a long sigh. The trouble is that I don't think I feel very adventurous. Don't worry, Jerem said. Once we get going, I'm sure you'll find out that you do. After it had been dark for some time, Jerem raised a hand. I think we can go now, he said, looking around to make sure there was no one about. All right, said Honey Bear. You lead the way. Keeping out of the moonlight as much as possible, they made their way quietly towards the zoo. It wasn't long before the main gates came into view, with the wall running away on either side. The gates are closed, said Honey Bear. I know, said Jerem. That's because the zoo is shut for the night, he pointed ahead. We can climb up that tree and drop down inside. This took them no time at all, and soon they were standing on a pass inside the zoo. Honey Bear looked all around, but the moon had gone behind a cloud, and she could see almost nothing in the darkness. We go this way, Jerem said, setting off along the pass. After a few minutes, the moon came out again. And Honey Bear could see they were approaching a large enclosure, in the middle of which stood a tall building. 
That's where the giraffes live, Jerem said. When Honey Bear asked what it was, he pointed to a corner of the enclosure. We can climb in over there. Soon, they were inside and made their way towards a tall building. As they were approaching, a head on the end of a very, very long neck poked out. Now that she was up close, Honey Bear couldn't get over how tall the giraffe was. This is Osmond, Jerem said, introducing him to Honey Bear. Osmond, this is my friend Honey Bear. 